our morning rounds, the inside story of getting the little pink pill approved. As we reported earlier, the FDA is finally giving the go-ahead to the first prescription medication for women's sexual dysfunction. The official name is Flavanserin. First on CBS This Morning, Cindy Whitehead is the CEO of Sprout Pharmaceuticals, and she's at the table. Her company will market the drug under the brand name Addy. Cindy, good morning to you. Good morning. So this was a great day for your company. You call it a big day for women. Yep. Big day. Yesterday, science won, and so too did women. Finally, women have the ability to make the choice with their health care providers whether or not they want treatment for the most common form of female sexual dysfunction. It affects one in ten women, and it's been a long time uh, to get to this moment. But your critics remain this morning. The critics have not gone away. The drug it was turned down twice by the FDA, talking about the potential side effects and the modest results. Did you change the drug in the meantime between the two times it was turned down to make it better, to make it more effective? So one of the things that did change that I think has been lost in the conversation is there's a lot of more data. Um, so when you look at the expert panel who had voted 18 to 6 for the approval of the drug, they were looking at new clinical trials, new safety trials that had never before been weighed in on by an expert group. Um, so that's really, it was a lot more science that has come forward that's allowed us to truly characterize both the benefit and the risk for patients. But I think Gail's question is, did all that science and that new data uh, cause you to change in any way? The drug, the has, drug, per se. The drug has not changed. Um, just the amount of information around it, amount of challenge studies we've done with it, pivotal trials, et cetera. Is there no way to have created a drug without the side effects? No drug comes without side effects. I think that's very important, right? Addy is no different than countless other drugs. What we do in uh, drug development is we really study it to understand what would be the benefits to patients, what would be the risks, and provided the FDA stamps that as approvable, we turn that over and let patients make those decisions with their health care providers. Here, here's what I struggle with a little bit. I think it's very common for women, especially after having children, they have a job, yeah. your libido takes a hit, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not an abnormal thing. I talk about this with my friends all the time. Yeah. And now I feel like we're sort of calling this a disease almost. No, no, and... Let's make that distinction. So low desire is not HSDD. If you're not interested in sex because you have no time, you have no privacy, whatever that may be, no energy at the end of the day, that's normal. Normal desire fluctuates. Hypoactive sexual desire disorder is a medical condition, and it's a medical condition we've known about since 1977. We now have four decades of medical research on this. How do you know this. the difference, though, between yeah, the two? So there's a diagnostic questionnaire healthcare providers walk through. Um, they really look to, did women have a desire in the past? Have they lost something, a normal they used to know? Are they bothered by it? If you're not bothered by it, you'd never be a candidate for medical treatment. And, you know, do you want to do something about it? And then they start to look at sort of exclusionary factors. Um, is this related to relationship issue? Mm -hmm. A pill would not be the answer. Talk therapy would be the right course for that patient. Could it be secondary to another medication? So it is a, a well understood diagnosis in the medical community um, and they really do they're able to chip away what it might be, and is it biological? Mm -hmm. And that's really where women have been underserved, right? We, we have a narrative, I think, in society that has really reduced all things in the bedroom for men to biology, as witnessed by countless medical treatment options, and all things in the bedroom for women to psychology. And the truth is, both genders both bring both things into the bedroom, and women deserve a biological treatment option. I know a lot of women are very excited about this news today, yes. but I also know that there are critics on the other side that said, your company, Sprout Lock, launched such a well-founded, well-funded campaign, and that it sends a wrong message to companies that if you can launch a campaign, you can convince the FDA to approve something that they normally wouldn't, that it all became a big public relations process. So that's factually inaccurate. We are one of 26 organizations that are part of a coalition effort in this. We are about one of them. I think we have been the case in point in a much larger conversation that needed to happen. And these are some of the most prestigious women's rights groups, women's health groups, and medical societies. Because Sprout itself is not a big pharmaceutical company. <laughs> no. mm -hmm. We are, uh, we tease that we're a company that can entirely fit in an elevator. <laughs> and our mission was always from the get-go to change the conversation around female sexuality. And, and how should the conversation be changed? You, you know what, I think, we, I think we operate at the extreme. Sort of we either hypersexualize in our culture or we treat it as totally taboo. And if we come right down the middle to logic, sex is part of who we are. It's part of our relationships for most of us, our marriages. And frankly, if something isn't going right and it's medical, I believe you should have medical treatments to address that. The greatest legacy for us, I think, in breaking through with this first is that we would open the door 
for a variety of treatment options to come forward. Addy is not going to work for all women. Mm -hmm. It will not. Like no drug works for sort of all patients. When will it so be ready, Cindy? Yeah, it'll be ready. We're going to go to work now. We're going to get it out there by October the 17th. That's our launch date. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Cindy.